past cup of tea. For as long as I can remember, I've had an interest in the natural world. As a boy and a young adult, that was certainly mainly birds. And if you're a nature lover, I'm sure um, that may have been the same for you, maybe not. But in recent years, um, particularly since I started doing uh, dabbling in photography and making these videos, I be my interest has broadened out beyond birds uh, to include um, things like dragonflies, uh, plants, um, trees, um, and just recently, um, what I refer to as the three Bs, which doesn't include birds, uh, bugs, bees, and butterflies. And past couple of weeks, I've been getting out and taking photos and footage uh, of creatures that fall into those categories. So I thought today I would showcase some of my photos and footage of these mini beasts, and I hope you'll enjoy what's coming up now, and I'll see you again at the end. The umbrella-like flower heads of common hogweed are a great place to start for a summertime mini beast hunt and here we have a nice pair of thick-legged flower beetles. We'll see quite a few of them in this showcase. It's only the male that has the bulbous thighs which give the species its name. Here's a male on a bellbine flower. Another profitable plant to check out is ragwort known for being devastatingly harmful to horses if it ends up in their hay. It's also known for being the plant on which the cinnabar moth lays its eggs. In the past, I've seen ragwort heads covered in the striking black and yellow striped caterpillars of this species. But this year, I've only seen the one small individual. As well as the cinnabar, there are plenty of other species to be found on ragwort. On this head we once again see thick-legged flower beetles, along with a slow bug on the right and possibly some sort of black ladybird on the left. On the same head a few moments later, the slow bug, which is a kind of shield bug, has come round to the front and some sort of ichneumonid wasp has arrived on the right. Still on the ragwort, on this head we've got the inevitable thick-legged flower beetles at the front a common red soldier beetle just visible over on the left, but most noticeably a couple of nice butterflies. The one with its wings up is a small copper, and the other is one of the skippers, of which more in a moment. The small copper, despite being a smallish butterfly, is really quite eye-catching, both in flight and when settled. As for the skipper, we do have several species in the UK, and I'd recognise that this was either an Essex skipper or a small skipper. It wasn't until I got home that I realised that the only reliable way to tell them apart is to get a good look at the underside of the tips of the antennae. In the Essex skipper they're described as jet black, whereas in the small skipper they're more sort of brownie orange. This one from a few days later at Page's Wood clearly shows the jet black underside to the antennae tips, as do these video clips from Bean Valley. Clearly an Essex skipper on this occasion. Right, time for a couple of blue butterflies now. Firstly, a male common blue from some open grassland, and then a holly blue from my garden. Here they are side by side for comparison. Sticking with the colour blue, this rather attractive specimen is a blue-tailed damselfly, not to be confused with the scarce blue-tailed. Apparently the visual clue is to do with which of the abdominal segments has the solid blue on it. Switching from blue to red now, and we're back on the hogweed. This was at Page's Wood, where these common red soldier beetles were having a great time on top of and underneath the flower head. A few days later at Beam Valley, a close look at this thistle revealed what I instantly recognised as a weevil. 
it's the down curved snout which gives it away. I can't be sure as I'm not an expert, but I think this might be a Canada thistle bud weevil. Weevils are part of the Coleoptera or beetle order, so like most beetles, they can fly. Right, time for the only bee to feature in this parade of mini beasts. This is a rather fine example of a red-tailed bumblebee visiting what I believe to be common milk pea. Check out those pollen baskets. We're nearly at the end now and I'm going to round off with a quartet of butterflies. Firstly, a couple of quite similar brown species. This one is a meadow brown and this one is a ringlet. And here they are side by side for comparison. The best way to tell which is which of these two is to remember that the ringlet has more rings. Not quite bringing up the rear, but this is my most recent capture, appearing in my garden quite literally on the morning I was finalising the edit on this video. This is a gatekeeper. We can tell that this one's a female as it lacks the brown smudge on the upper side of the forewing. And last but not least, a butterfly which I have known some people confuse as a moth. This is the comma butterfly. So called because it has a white comma-like marking on the underside of the wing, as seen in this photo from my garden last year. Incidentally, we can tell it's a butterfly rather than a moth because it has club-shaped ends to its antennae. So that was quite an assortment, wasn't it? And what is certainly true is, by, is that by taking photos and footage of these little creatures, um, it's caused me to learn more about them. Uh, and that can never be a bad thing. So I'd encourage you to do the same. Uh, get your camera out or, or even just your phone and start taking pictures and footage of these little creatures and uh, see what you can learn. Okay. Join me again soon here on Naturally Curious UK. Meanwhile, as always, you stay safe, stay sane, stay curious and keep enjoying the wonders of nature where you are. <laughs>